Hello, operators, whether you're tier one or tier none, you're welcome here. I was the white motorcycle policeman. Hello, operators, whether you're tier one or tier none, you are welcome here. I want to welcome you to this special edition of the Shooting Blanks podcast. We're not in our regular studio. We are on the road with the Tens of Dollars Tour, and we are at Range Time 2020 in Phoenix, Arizona, the all-simulator range, over 600 scenarios, and the whole back of this building is a simulation range. You know what that means? Yes, for charity, I'm going to get shot in the gooch later today with a simulation. But before we get there, I want to introduce you to somebody that I met and spoke with for a little while, night before last, and again last night. No, just last night, was it? Time runs together. Shooter Rugi. Look at that face. Look at that smile. Do you recognize him? You Please probably not. do if we put it in context for you. To some other nearby vehicles. Also a concern about that uh, building that is nearby. Uh, and it appears as if there's some folks that are trying to... All right. It, it looks like there's some type of weapon there. Shooter, sir, it's good folks. What happened at work the other day? I mean, I, I get filmed at work a lot of times, but my videos don't go viral. People take pictures of me and video me eating hot dogs, uh, eating pizza, looking at gun magazines. But you, somebody filmed you at work. Uh, it's kind of gone super viral. What happened? Uh, yeah, it's all a little crazy. Um, saw a couple guys with some rifles, and I like guns, so I figured I'd try to play with them so <laughs> <laughs> just kind of snatched them up from them and uh you know fiddle fucked with them after that see what i can do with them um no in all seriousness there was a uh, very fluid situation um riots in seattle um riots very different than protests um and some some guys got a hold of some uh police issued uh patrol rifles and wanted to do some bad things so i kind of inserted myself in the situation and uh you know did what you know i think anyone in my position really would have done especially if they've uh made that choice beforehand so folks that's what we call humble this guy is what we call operator as fuck <laughs> seeing the video you're gonna get, yeah we can do that on podcast shooter we can curse if we have to and when it's <laughs> and thank you for making the distinction between a protest, a peaceful protest, which we're all for, we've all fought for, and a riot. We ain't playing with riots. We don't like that. So, little background: uh, you were doing some security, and you noticed that going on. And brother, you have got some Jackie Chan ninja skills. You moved so fast. The conversations I've had over the last couple of days about how quick you stripped that rifle and cleared that rifle. I literally expected you to tear that AR apart at the receiver with your bare hands. Yeah, exactly. I expected that. <laughs> so uh, that's not all you've done in life. That's the part that brought you to where you are now. The last 72 hours have been what for you? Really, there's only one word, and it's insane. It's absolutely insane. So when we tracked you down on Sunday, I think you had 900 and some followers. Sunday, yeah. So Saturday, when I stepped off to go to work, um, I made. I don't really. I never paid attention to that before now, but now it seems like the most important thing in the world to everybody. Uh, um, I maybe had 150, 200. I don't know. Like I had thought about trying to make it more. I had no idea how. And now I think I'm up over, I woke up this morning up over 13,000. Well, guess what, brother? You're over 14,500. I don't want to make light of it, but you, you saved lives, potentially saved lives. Now, those clowns that had those rifles had never handled one or didn't know how to handle them. But I guarantee you there was somebody in that crowd who knew how to handle it and wanted to get their hands on it and could have done a lot of damage and would have had to give them a chance. So I appreciate you doing that. I appreciate you stepping out to do that. I like, like I said, man. It was a uh, it was a choice made multiple times every single day for years and training. And I mean, it was the choice was made because I mean, you can figure out a whole slew of reasons and everything. It's all different to every person. But uh, 
anyone that was put in the job or picked the job that I did probably would have done exactly the same thing. Or at least I, I guess I would have hoped done the same thing. I'd like to believe that too. And matter of fact, I do believe they would have. Now you are a Marine and we want to thank you for your service. And you got back in the country just in time for what to happen here. Uh, um, <laughs> COVID dropped. Um, yeah, 2020 has been an interesting year. It's really testing us as a, uh, you know, humanity. Yeah. So you got back what January 20th from Iraq as a contractor. Yes, got sir. We're back into home in Washington State. COVID 19 happens. <laughs> yeah. It uh, my year kicked off with the siege, you know, air quote siege of Baghdad. So then I got home and all this happened. And hope I'm not bringing bad juju. No, you're not bringing bad juju. What did you do during the lockdown? You got a new puppy, I know that. Oh, my, yeah, my wife got a new puppy. That was after we got home, though. Um, after I got home, excuse me. Um, in case anyone wants to know, Bernie's Mountain Dogs, they whine a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, what I did during that, I mean, I was there as a firearms instructor. I wasn't there as, you know, a uh, PSS guy. Um I'm talking so, about that back to Washington after all that. Oh, Jay, I'm sorry. If you come back into the, no, don't be sorry. You come back into the COVID-19 lockdown, and what have you been doing to keep busy until now? Oh, looking for work, man. Um, after that contract, I was to come home looking for work and uh, getting that going, and then this happened. So COVID hits. My wife's, she's a gymnastics uh, director, and she almost, her company uh, that she works for is, almost got put completely under. They had to take a small business loan. Me, I was just doing whatever I can to get another contract going, but that slowed to a grind. You know? I, can, I can appreciate that. And I think one of the golden linings out of all this uh, for you personally is uh, you've come to the attention of a lot of people in the industry. Uh, what's been impressive, not only was your tactics and your demeanor and the way you handled yourself that day, it's, I was more than equally impressed and humbled by our first conversation. Uh, you're the real. Uh, girl. <laughs> uh, I appreciate that. I don't feel that way, honestly. Um, I'm, like I, I think I said it to you, I'm a, I'm a very introverted person. So, um, you know, I like peace and quiet and I live a little outside the, my own city to get that. So all this has been nuts and crazy and I'm, I'm trying to make it work to, through a business standpoint because I'm not going to ignore the timing and opportunity. That would be very un-infantryman of me. Absolutely. We, we know you're all about infantry. And speaking of that, uh, after we talked, you know, one of the, for me personally, one of the nicest things about being the old man, <laughs> my first magazine cover was where most of my friends were born, uh, and we call it the Shot Show Silverback Club. Is that I reached out to the people. I don't like asking for things for myself, but I like asking for other people. Um, and I want to see you be successful. I don't want this to be short term for you. I watched your shooting videos and you were very humble about those. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 you talked about owning a POF rifle. Well, Frank DeSoma, the owner of uh, POF rifles, called last night. He wanted to be able to dial in today, but since we're remote, uh, it's almost impossible to bring him on to a Skype call, and I apologize, but he wanted to send, oh. send you his best. He analyzed your conduct in the first 18 seconds of our call. He said, <laughs> video, boom, 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 great. And I told him you owned a POF rifle. He said, great. And then I told him what you shared with me personally was that you had modified the rifle uh, quite a bit for your use. He's like, and that you thought he might not like that. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. He said, yeah. He said no, no, bro. If it works for him, that's what I want to know, that it works for him. Yeah. So there are a lot of people in the background who've uh, come forward who are interested in you. Uh, we're not going to share all of them here online. I think the best thing was, as I shared with somebody, and he said, what's his fee schedule? And I said, brother, this is so new to him. He doesn't even know what a fee schedule is. So I know you have a good friend there in Washington who's uh, media savvy, uh, who's going to help you with that. Uh, but uh, I Yeah, um, and... and do you mind if I throw a shot? Uh, do you mind if I throw a shout out? Throw a shout out to anybody you want. This is your time. The gentleman you're mentioning is a very close personal friend of mine. He was my staff and CEO when I was a marksmanship instructor in the Marine Corps. Um, John Watkins. He's the owner and CEO of Feed Me, Fight Me, um, coffee and apparel for athletic clothing. 
Um, his company needs no help from me, but he is amazing. His company uh, is yeah. thanking him for what he's doing for you on our Instagram, Facebook, and, and our YouTube uh, channel. He, uh, he has been 100% amazing and guiding me through this. I actually met up with him um, this last week before any of this was even in the scope of anything. And he was already like, hey, yeah, let's do this. Let's give me, give me all the guidance I could he could for this company. And uh, now it's just like I'm leaning on him. Like he's my wheelchair right now because he knows what to do, and I'm over here trying to figure out, you know, typing on a computer instead of uh, cleaning my my pistol for the next adventure. But uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely. So and, I, I'm uh, not a psychic, but I, I I'm going to put the word out there uh, for those manufacturers, product, weapons, accessories. You need to get this guy in your booth for SHOT Show 2021. He was deployed for probably the last nine SHOT Shows, last eight SHOT Shows. He was away. Yeah. You need to get him now. You need to get him signed up and prepay him so he can be in your booth for 2021. <laughs> you think I'd be, I'm not. I'm old. I can ask for stuff. I'm an old man. I can do that. Oh, man. Hire this guy. Get your product in his hands. Now, he's, and he's like me. I know you are a shooter. You're not going to endorse any products you don't like. But you don't believe in it, you would use. Am I correct? Uh, I mean, yeah. Uh, you know, I have a lot of close friends and family that, uh, you know, they talk to me about guns. They know that that's what my passion is, and I try to know all I can and learn all I can about it. So they ask, and I'm like, well, what's your need? Okay, this is what best fits that need. And they'll ask me, you know, they'll find out whatever's on the Internet and going through the forms, and honestly, there's a lot of, you know, air quote noise on those forms so i'll try to filter that for them real quick and uh like my I agree. my brother bought a patriot orange factory rifle because i have one because i think they're great um I, although i did change quite a few things on mine and you know just stuff like that i if i'm not gonna have it for me then uh and it doesn't fit the other situation then or needs then i want I would probably recommend it. Going to all those comments on the feeds like you do for research is why I have gray hair and what little have it's horrible because you can get hey, down there. I am 28 years old. I haven't shaved my head since I was 16. And I thought you told me last night you might shave your head for today. That doesn't look like a fresh shaved head. <clears throat> yeah, I was up pretty late trying to, I guess, media manage is a, uh, a phrase I should use. Um, so I spent some time with the wife hanging out with her and the dog and i crashed and then i woke up and had coffee and here i am with you i apologize you know maybe we need to get another time i can show you a fresh shape no, i apologize you're lucky i showered today during this covid 19 lockdown <laughs> my goal is to get you to spit that coffee out at some point please no um <laughs> you're in the garage you can hose it out it'll be just fine actually i after our, during our phone call yesterday i spilt my red bull and i had to clean it off of a, a rifle case that i have that was uh interesting there's a couple things they don't let me have they don't let me have caffeine well a lot of caffeine and they most certainly don't let me have red bull <laughs> i got told i deserved it and i needed to be alert so yeah i got a little bit of crazy in me so that's the concern so I'm excited to know you. I'm honored to have talked to you. I'm honored to met you. Uh, I'm so grateful that you were the person that encountered those young men with those weapons. Uh, I hope that somehow they realize that you saved them from a life of heartache if they lived. Uh, they could. Uh, and about the officers, did they get their weapons back? Do we know? Absolutely. All right. All right. Um, the police got their weapons back. I returned them personally. Those specific officers, um, if I may, real quick, there's a lot of words out there like, oh, why they leave and ditch their rifles in a vehicle. That absolutely was not the case. Those vehicles were parked before everything happened, and these guys were doing their job, and I trust they were doing their job in a professional manner and right. couldn't get back to it. That was the case, but I'm glad you're clarifying that. Uh, I want you to be safe while you're out there. Uh I want you to promise me now that when you see me at SHOT Show and you have your entourage of <laughs> or more people and your matching set of miniature and full-size Belgian Malinois, that when you go <laughs> to the booth, you'll do more than give me a nod. Because I have to say that we have seen a lot of people come up in our time, but I know that's not the case. I know that's not going to be you. There's some right. people who want to do some things for you. 
And I know you're humble I, about that. Uh, yeah. uh, I can't imagine why. Look, all this has been crazy and overwhelming. I, I did my job and all these things coming to me and I appreciate it. But I've said, I've literally said the same thing. Everybody is like, it is not necessary. I appreciate it. But then again, it comes to that line, like propriety. It's rude to accept or it's rude to refuse to a point, you know, what's with Tarzan. What's your fascination with Tarzan? <laughs> oh man. Um, dive into the weeds. Tarzan is the man of all mans. He is what men should be flat out. Um, I'm not going to lie. I would like a chimpanzee. Oh. I like to hang out with a chimp. Okay. Well, let's let's set the record straight here on live. Um, they are not gorillas. Dang. I get that all the time. They are not gorillas. They are, as described in the books, a species of ape unknown to mankind. All right? They are not They actually fight gorillas all the time. So that's not a chimp in the Tarzan TV shows of my childhood. It may no. have been a chimp, but that's not the right and, and, Yeah, well, There's a... You know, they kind of look similar. No, man. The uh, his tribe. They're. I'm totally nerding out right now. This is terrible. Um, if you want to know how extreme it is, I have a huge tattoo of Tarzan on my side, um, and I have an entire bookcase collection of Tarzan books and comics and movie posters. It's uh, it's pretty bad. Um, no, they're uh, they're called uh, Mangani. It's the uh, word that Edgar Rice Burroughs came up with for him and all his genius and uh fully rec recommend it honestly he has been a you know i'm a very uh big reader he has been a big influence on how to act he just does it's not a decision it is you do it without you know without regard to your safety because you are there and it needs to be done um it, it, it's he's amazing <laughs> out freaking standing uh, for those of our followers who are in Arizona where we are, I'm sure they're all going to notice that over your right shoulders, there's some light coming in and there's uh, some green stuff out there. We don't have green things in Arizona. What are those green things? Are that? There's some uh, evergreen trees, man. I got to, and the fence is lined with grapevines and Washington State, man, it is gorgeous. I grew up here. Um, it's green. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And I love it. You're wearing a hoodie. Uh, we get to wear those in Arizona for about 18 days, usually <laughs> January 1st through the 18th. Otherwise, we're we're not doing that. And your garage door is open, which means it's less than 112 degrees there, I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, for a while, I was uh, used to 130 plus, and now I'm sitting here, and I'm, I just love it. The weather's getting great. It's clearing up. Um, the other day, Saturday, it rained all day, so that made a, you know, a little, little bit of extra interesting in there. Um, but yeah, it's Weather's clearing up. It's beautiful here. I'm up. I'm near the uh, Olympic National Forest, and uh, if anyone has ever Googled it or Pinterest it, it is one of the most beautiful places in the world. I'm going to do that later today if Ben lets me have my phone back. He said I've been on my phone too much today. <laughs> Sounds like my wife. Or did he say I was off my medication? One of the two, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to do this, but so many people are asking me to have you do a, you know what, I am going to do it. And if you don't want to do it, that's fine. A rundown of the gear you wear to work. Oh, man. Like what? who makes the pack? What boots was he wearing? Because <laughs> I'm sure that, that you, I think you're going to be the next tactical cosplay uh, character. <laughs> Oh, well, that's pretty easy, man. Hoodie and Glock in a pocket. That's all you got to do. Um, I, no, I get it. I get it. I, uh, I'm a big gear guy, too. Actually, if you were to see behind me, I got my there it is. Uh, a training uh, barricade that my father-in-law built for me. Um, and I got my gun belts on there. I get it, you know. But uh, I can't say it's something I use. The things that I used on Saturday is something I use all the time. I try to change whatever it is I need to whatever situation I need. Mission specific. Yeah, it's uh, situation dictates. Big thing in Marine Corps infantry. Situation dictates, and I had some of those uh, keyboard commandos and you know tactical Tommies all over the internet. Like you know, you should have done this, done this. Well, I mean. I have the uh, situation dictates the tactics. I have not seen any of that, and the, that is the minority, and you, you called them right, the tactical keyboard guys. Yeah. Situation dictates tactics, not the other way around, especially in an environment that I was, you know, put into. Um, so, I mean, what I was wearing, I, shoot, man, I think I might have been wearing some regular, like, $20 cheap, 
running shoes because they were oh, light and easy to put exactly. on. I don't even know who they're made by. I was just I was strapped for cash and I needed something. So, and I've been using them since. Um, my pants. I have five eleven pants. I I'm, I don't know what they're called. Um, I bought them because they were stretchy and I'm husky and it fit. Um, okay, they, wait, let me let me step here. You're husky. Uh, you're gonna do great things in this industry, but don't get fat, brother. I the only fat tactical plus size model. You can be the husky <laughs> model if you want to be, but we're gonna have words if you come up looking fat. Because you know I'm the <laughs> guy that cry and these other companies to go to four XL. Yes, yeah. they sell for they don't advertise it on their website because they don't want people to know. But you know what? You can buy it. Um, yeah, yeah. The uh, have well, six hundred pair of five eleven pants in sizes from thirty two to I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, so let I me. Mean, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I uh, kind of let COVID get to me, and I didn't do much after coming home. And uh, this has actually been the longest time I've been home since before I joined the Marine Corps. And I have a wife who cooks amazing, and I have no self-control. So and, now I've actually what, started the other day to get my chi together. So You said food. What is your favorite meal that your wife cooks? Oh, I can't say that because uh, then she'll use it as a tool. <laughs> 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 but I, mean, I will say it has tater tots in it. Oh yes, tater tots, potatoes. No, and- she, she cooks everything amazing. We have a Sunday dinner with the family every every Sunday, and we like plan it out through the week. Um, it's 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 amazing. It's great. This last uh, Sunday was uh, she made lasagna um, from scratch for the first time, and the whole pan, and it was gone. Oh, we could talk about food. I could listen to you talk about food for hours. I'm going to be sure our folks, our friends in Hawaii, get you one of the tactical foodie patches. And you might, <laughs> and you might want to follow that hashtag too. Hashtag tactical foodie. Uh, we have a lot of fun with that. Yeah. Uh, As to uh, real quick to uh, get back to your your question, um, the shoes I really I couldn't I could I don't remember the name the pants I think they were five eleven Apex. Um, and uh, up here, up on the top layer, I mean, you saw that black sweater. That was a hoodie my father gave, and this is actually my wife's that I'm wearing. Um, he gave her and I one for our wedding um, when he came. He came from Pakistan to meet us in Italy for the wedding, and uh, so that's what I was wearing then because it was, you know, black. It was nondescript. It had a logo, but everything going on, people weren't really going to notice. And underneath, I wore a long. A long sleeve, five eleven, with a hoodie, cause uh, it's a t-shirt. Cause I knew if something happened, and you know, straight up Assassin's Creed. Love the gaming franchise, Ubisoft. <laughs> love you guys. Keep that up. Looking forward to Valhalla. Um, so I knew that if I had to do something, I was gonna have to drop my sweatshirt and blend in with, and move in with the crowd again. So that's what I ended up having to do, and threw my hoodie up on that shirt and. Uh, Underneath all that, man, shout out to Achilles Heel Tactical. Um, things out in Hawaii, a buddy of mine I served with. He uh, he does great things, and I I wear his shirts. But uh, that's pretty much all it was. As for the bag, is a Vertex single sling, you know, shoulder strap with uh, I don't know the name of the bag, man. Um, and I had I had two IFACs in there. Shooter Rugi bag going forward. Um, actually, uh, a very. I wouldn't. I'm not. I don't know. Influential, but someone I look up to in the uh, long range precision world um, hit me up and suggested that the gray man industry is what I should try to get into. And uh, I had never thought about it, but I mean, marketing wise, I guess it kind of fits. But uh, yeah, I support you in the gray man. But I've done a video a couple years ago, tongue in cheek video, one of my funny ones. I don't support the gray man because if you watch movies. The guys who survive are the ones who are tacked out all the way. I mean, the multicam millionaires, you know, the, the Gucci guns, they're the ones who live. The guys who look great, they get shot in movies. I don't want that to happen. No, but in seri- all seriousness, Gray Man, White might be a good way for you to go. Uh, you're a great guy. And I know you had some apprehension about coming on here today, and I can appreciate that. Well, this, this, I listen this, to podcasts all the time. I uh, Modern Day Sniper, uh, Max Ordnance Academy, stuff like that. You know, long range right. shooting. Just shooting yeah, you in can't general. shout out to well, you can shout out to those people. I don't mind, and I'm gonna let you finish as long as when you do your next one. And I know there's about five people waiting to get you on their podcast. Do you throw a shout out to the old man? 
the tactical size model and shooting and uh oh i don't need to man you're uh you're, you're out there you've done it you you uh you contacted me first and uh you know i <laughs> i think you're a great personality um some fun well, you, shit, you, uh, so. yeah you'll outgrow that i'm kidding <laughs> i i'm I appreciate you coming on with us. Things happen in people's lives. You know, most of the our most recent interviews have been policemen who have been shot and survived being shot. We've done a few of those. There's that moment in time that changes their life, and some amazing things have come out of it. Yeah. Uh, and usually I interview people down the road after that's happened. We're interviewing you as it's happening for you. You may not believe this, but I'm gonna, I am want you to think back a year from now, six months from now, on what you doing the right thing, being in the right place at the right time, how that's going to pay off for you in, in your life. And, and I see it happening. I know it's happening. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad to know you, even though we haven't met in person yet, but we will because you're going to be at SHOT Show 2021 <laughs> uh, in at least one to five booths if I can help it. Oh, man. That's, uh, that's crazy. I've always wanted to go to SHOT Show because I just, I mean, I've never been there, so I have no preconceived anything on it's it. It's just it's guns, 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 guns. It's an adult Disneyland, and if you hang with me, I guarantee you get VIP entrance to every, not party, buffet. <laughs> 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 the couple of the buffets going to be different in 2021. We're not going to be able to go up and serve ourselves. You know how embarrassing it's going to be for me to say to a guy, I'd like four slices of prime rib. Dude, I went, I went to Burgerville the other day with my brother, and I, Burgerville is a Pacific Northwest chain up here, and uh, we ordered 16 double cheeseburgers. <laughs> were you not feeling, right, just, <laughs> were you getting ready for a run? You didn't want to eat? <laughs> well, we were on a long drive, and uh, we can. it's not up like there's none within an hour of us, so we pulled up, and he said the amount, and I just looked at him, so I said it, and they repeated it to make sure, and I was like, yeah, that's that's 16, so 70-plus bucks later, we're on the way eating, God, so many burgers. How can people contact you? What's your Instagram? Uh, underscore shooter, underscore Rugi, underscore. Uh, Rugi is R-U-G-H-I. Um, that's where I'm trying to keep all this flow of information everything to. And let's keep it there. And, and folks, if you're going to message him, I want to I want to let you know he is going to get to all your messages. I think he's got messages out through June 30th now. You must have. It's I'll put it like this: my if I hold my phone up, it's a constant update, one second, one second, one second of everything that's flowing through, and it's crazy. And all the support is beyond anything I ever imagined was out there or possible. And I mean. It's, it's it's overwhelming it's great like keep the community alive and keep doing that and speak up the reason that uh, we're in a lot of ways losing a media battle is because the yippy loudmouth side is making themselves known because they like to talk the other side is well we'd rather act but uh you know talking and speaking out is acting so that we're going to have to use that up front or somewhere. That's powerful words. I want to thank you for what you did. I want to thank you for your time. Please apologize to your wife for letting me take you away from her this time this morning. <laughs> uh, I know, know that you're loved. Lots of Marines here. We've got some in the room. They're actually doing something in the other room. I was hoping he'd come in, but we don't have. Oh, he's doing some shooting in the simulation range. I'd be doing the same thing. No, he, he's, he's good. They're going to shoot in the gooch. I know that. I know that when you and I finish, I'm going to walk in there and get shot. Well, you'll see that video come Wednesday. Thank you for coming on. Uh, I hope you don't regret it. Oh, no, not at all. I look forward to further communication and uh, what you know help you've offered and have already done and continue to offer in the future. I am more than willing to listen to whatever experience I can and learn and get into it. I appreciate it. Well, once again, thank you. You've been listening to and watching Shooting Blanks. I'm Ed, the Tactical Plus Size Model, and we have been very fortunate to have Shooter Rugi with us. A link to his Instagram will be in the description. A shout out to his mentor. His business are going to be there as well. Like, follow, spend some money at that guy's website. He's going all out to help this young Marine. Yeah. Buy, some, buy some 4XL shirts if he's got them and send them to me and I'll wear them. Remember, that's 4XL. I got to operate. I can't be doing that. 